where did people go to kind of keep abreast of not the news as in what happened today with the Spanish Armada, but rather how these ideas and values and things were shifting. Well, people went to the theatre. Let's lead in then to your other work. <laughs> you are a My senior. You are a senior lecturer in linguistics. No, I'm not. No, I'm an associate professor. Oh, I apologise. Sorry, I forgot. That's right. I forgot all about that. <laughs> no, no, no. I it's humbly right. submit my apology yeah. to your recognition. Um, Look, if you're going to use a title on me, use the yeah. right one, mate. Yeah, oh, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. So associate professor. Yes, um, I associate with professors. That's right. So tell me about the work, because I know that through your digging into and your your development of, of this this side of the work that's led you to work with indigenous communities and um we're going to talk a little bit later about you know some of those other areas where you work in but tell me more about your work as an associate professor of linguistics and how that um relationship with shakespeare works for you that's such a good question and if you'd asked me that even five years ago i would have said i don't know I just like them both. Go away. Um, but, of course, there's probably, you know, a deeper response to that. So it's like, you're right. And it's even, if someone says a linguistics and drama, people can go, oh, I can see a link between yeah. those. It's like, yeah, but wait a second. My work in linguistics is actually with describing Australian Indigenous languages and helping communities to, to, to develop language materials. Uh, my work in drama is with Shakespeare. So if you said, okay, Australian Aboriginal languages and Shakespeare, what do they have in common? A few years ago, I would have said, I like them both. That's what they have in common. Uh, but I think there is a link. And that link is, um, if I had to coin a pithy word, I would say oracy. Um, What do I mean by that? I mean, um, spoken culture, oral culture. Ah, uh, interesting. So um, when we think of culture, and um, the arts, we often think of things, or we, I don't know about we, many people often think of things that are permanent. So if I said the arts, people might say painting, sculpture, yep. they might say um, uh, music, which is also ephemeral, but you know, if we record everything now, don't we? Um, they might say literature, and they would often think of drama perhaps as coming under literature. Whereas what I'm interested in is not the literary aspect of theatre, but that ephemeral, the thing that exists and then is gone, is spoken. And, you know, yes, okay, we have tried on occasion to video our plays. Guess what? <laughs> it ain't the same thing. No. Um, uh, yeah. And even if you have the five cameras and the really expensive equipment and do a good job, it is not the same as the experience of I'm seeing it live. Performance. Yeah. Um, otherwise, we, we as a species would have stopped doing live performance. Absolutely. So it's, and, and in the theatre, you've got, uh, in the Shakespeare theatre in particular, because theatre doesn't have to be verbal at all or strongly verbal, but Shakespeare's theatre is very verbal. A lot happens through the words. Um, so it's about the transmission of concepts, ideas, feelings, experiences, thoughts through words. Um, so it's culture that is transmitted orally. Uh, indigenous cultures, now, of course, we what I do is I write the languages down. I write dictionaries. I write grammars describing the language. But indigenous culture for tens of thousands of years has been transmitted orally. Uh, and orally and through the performing arts. So the means by which... I'm going to say most because I wouldn't dare speak about yeah. all, uh, but and certainly the cultures which I'm familiar with, which tend to be in the central and northern part of Australia, but also coming over into, well, going both ways into Western Australia and Queensland. Um, how, how are the important things you need to know transmitted in such a culture? Well, they're transmitted through ceremonial knowledge, through song, largely through song. And, and song doesn't, the song often happens uh, in the ceremonial context. It's accompanied by the visual. So what we, with our Western simplistic eyes, would call song and dance. Yeah. A ceremony, what's that? Oh, it's singing and dancing. It's a whole lot of other things besides. But yeah, there is, there is language 
coupled with a visual component, it is theatre uh, by, you know, a definition of theatre. And, and theatre, in fact, has its origins uh, in, in rituals. Even the Western tradition, you know, like people go, oh, theatre was invented by the ancient Greeks. No, maybe buildings called theatres were invented by the ancient Greeks, but Greek theatre, which is where we begin to recognise Western theatre as sort of the theatre we mostly see now, began in ritual. It began yeah. in, in a, a choric a chorus parading and moving, singing, chanting, dancing. And that evolved into the early plays with a chorus and a protagonist. And then a chorus and protagonist and antagonist or deuteragonist. And then a third character was added, chorus mm. and three characters. And then, then all hell broke loose and, and we get plays. And then the poor old chorus disappeared. Um, except in chorus lines and so forth. Yeah. Uh, but so this idea of oral transmission of culture. So uh, with cultures that do not have writing traditionally, and it stands to reason that they don't have writing for, it's not like, oh, they didn't think of writing things down. It's like, no, uh, what are they going to do with all these pieces of writing when they have a migratory um, territorial relationship? So it's not that they're, I was talking about this someone yesterday. People use the word nomadic. It's not inaccurate, but often when you say nomadic, people think of people aimlessly wandering around. Yeah. No, they follow, they move. No, nomadic in this sense, migratory, ambulatory, no word quite captures it. So I'll say nomadic. Doesn't mean you just wander randomly. You try wandering randomly in the in the Western <laughs> desert and see how long you survive, right? It's moving seasonally and by ecological things, moving along well-established patterns that are part of your territory and there are places that are other people's territory and you don't go wandering that way. Um, or if you do, you negotiate and so on. And how is that knowledge passed on of where to go, of where the nearest permanent water source is, of what you can and can't eat? That's all encoded in the ceremonies and in the songs. It's all transmitted generation to generation by language. And... In Shakespeare's time, <laughs> um, Shakespeare lived at a fascinating time, at the time yeah. when language was, when we were going from a very, oh, we, Europeans, yeah. wogs like me, were going from a very um, oral culture towards a literate, literary culture, a writing down of things. Um, so the great thing about that is that because we'd already reached the stage of, you know, oh, we're going to do a play, we're going to write down what you're going to say, but we're going to say it out loud. That means we still have a record of it. If yeah. you go back much earlier, we don't have records of the plays or not of many of them. Um, but if you get much later than Shakespeare, we already get to the bit where the oral has started to disappear, where when you get something yeah. that's written down, you just open it, the words go in your eye and into your brain rather than, um, you know, I guess uh, in your ear and your brain or into your eye, through your brain, out your mouth and back into your ear and into, you know, and it wakes up all these different things. So um, the Renaissance was a, an amazing time when a lot was changing. So the Elizabethan period, a lot was changing in the Western European world. Um, and I think we'll probably talk about that later. But given that a lot was changing, where did people go to kind of keep abreast of not the news as in what happened today with the Spanish Armada, but rather how these ideas and values and things were shifting? Well, people went to the theatre because that's where um, a lot of these con conflicting ideas or the changes that were happening were questioned out loud and everyone could understand them. And so the, there's, there's that connection there between, uh, so I call it oracy as a play on the word literacy. Literacy means, you know, transmission of stuff through writing things down. So oracy is about culture that is spoken and heard. And that's the Excellent. connection. Big thanks to Rob Pensilfini, Artistic Director of the Queensland Shakespeare Ensemble. Now, QSE do amazing work with Shakespeare, and you can learn a little bit more about that through the links in the description below. And down there will also be a link to the mini playlist of all the videos that I shot with Rob around aspects of Shakespeare. He is a wealth of knowledge, so definitely check that out. Uh, it would be great if you give this video a like, subscribe to the channel, and if you haven't already, share it with someone who you think might need it. 
Thanks very much. Have a look at some of these other Shakespeare videos and I will see you there.